What are the forms of literature in Mindanao? And what's the real score of Mindanao literature? I asked my cousins from Davao about Mandaya and mentioned names about writers from Mindanao, but unfortunately they have no knowledge about them nor about Mandaya. This is now the challenge of the people of Mindanao, the government of Mindanao, to act on preserving their cultures and maybe acknowledge their very own writers and include their works in their curriculum for contextualization. Anyway, for today's episode, let's tackle the forms of literature in Mindanao, their examples, writers, and regions. This is Teacher L. Once again, never forget to click like and subscribe after watching this video. To start with, let me introduce to you the pride of Mindanao, my very good friend, Dani Castiglione Ciliada. Dani Castiglione Ciliada is a multidisciplinary artist, a thinker and writer from Mindanao. He is an accomplished surrealist painter sculptor and installation artist, philosopher, poet, essayist, musician, performance artist, photographer, and indie filmmaker. He is a contributing critic and feature writer for Manila Bulletin. You will know more about him and his masterpieces if you continue watching this video. Beforehand, let's talk about the forms of literature in Mindanao. Some of the video clips will follow. Again, also encodes customary law, standards of social and ethical behavior, notions of aesthetic beauty, and social values specific to the Maranao. Specialized female and male performers. <laughs> I'm going to give you a preliminary highlights of the forms of literatures like Bindigan, Darangan, Parang Sabil, and Opapano. Bindigan is a collective term for two epics of the Manobos, which are the Olahingan and Tula Laman. Darangan is the most popular epic song in Mindanao, while Parang Sabil is a version of ballad or narrative song which is about an outlaw or a bandit. And Opapano or O Bird and Bansamoro suggest the decades old struggle for peace in Mindanao. The Adventures of Agyo is an example of Bendigan, a Manobo folklore and epic. This is a story about Agyo and his family who needed to flee from home because of the colonizers. With the help of the gods, they were able to survive and move to the promised land. Goyo is the hero in this epic, who has a prowess in fighting with his power like a demigod. They were attacked by enemies in their newfound land. There was a bloody battle, but they won because of Ali Goyo. The promised land is described as a paradise and Ali Goyo's abode as a royal palace. Darangan existed before Islamization. It is an ancient epic song that encompasses a wealth of knowledge of the Maranao people who live in the Lake Lanao region of Mindanao. It has 17 cycles and a total of 72,000 lights. It celebrates episodes from Maranao history and the tribulations of mythical heroes. Its themes is about life and death, courtship, love and politics using symbols, figurative languages like metaphor, irony, and satire. Specialized female and male performers sing the Darangan during the wedding celebrations that typically last several nights. Performers must possess a prodigious memory, improvisation skills, poetic imagination, knowledge of customary law and genealogy, a flawless and elegant vocal technique, and the ability to engage an audience during long hours of performance. 
music and dance sometimes accompany the chanting. However, this aesthetic culture is slowly dying. Saving this needs urgent attention. According to the study of his story, Parak Sabil is a Taoist concept of defending their freedom, known as Kamaruan, from the American and Spanish colonizers. They were fighting for liberty in defending their Islam religion. During these wars, there were many Muslims who were martyred in the battlefield and were called Sabil. Sabil is an Arabic term, constructed word from the Quranic verse, Fray Sabi Lila, in the way of Allah. The person who involved himself or herself in the act was known as Parang Sabil. Parang is from a Malay term, Perang, which means to kill and be killed. This is the English translation of O Papanok's song. If I were a bird, I will join the wind so I can leave the sadness behind. Oh, my darling, my love, please be faithful as I will be coming back to you when peace and order are restored. Oh, my darling, my love, I have lived in a mountainous place. People I passed by were surprised. Oh, my darling, my love, it is painful to leave you as I pass by the mountain. Those who see me will wonder. A video clip of the song will follow. You could watch this in full in the link provided below. And now let's proceed to Mandaya oral poetry. According to Siliada, Mandaya describes the people living in the upland, such as mountains, plateaus, and valleys. Mandaya is a reclusive tribe, a shrinking tribal group scattered in the mountains and valleys of Davao Oriental, some regions of Sorigao del Sur, and part of Compostela Valley. The concentration of the Mandaya settlement, however, is in Katil, Baganga, and Caraga municipalities of Davao Oriental Province. The last known geographic dwellings of the vanishing pure-blooded Mandaya people. Mandaya oral poetry is also referred to as performative poetry, which may be in the form of bayok, Dawot and Uyog Uyog. This is an exclusive and integral part of the community life and handed down orally from generation to the next. Mandaya oral poetry is composed of loose form of free verse. This is meant to be sung or chanted during tribal gatherings may be spontaneously performed before the villagers or guests. It has no formal beginning or ending. It is an open-ended narrative about the past, the present, and the future. The poet performer here is called as Magbabayok, and this Magbabayok is usually female. The Magbabayok's role is parallel to a teacher, a philosopher, or a historian. Let's talk about Bayok. Bayok is a narrative poetry about life, love, death, and sacrifice, which is either sung or chanted by one or two people. This tells stories about joyness and struggles in life, the devotion towards family and community, religious rituals, social and environmental awareness within and outside a tribal village. This is not concerned with grammatical or syntactic rules. This simply mimics the sound of nature as a representation of the natural flow of language. This is intrinsically revelatory by nature, a dialogic encounter between the poet-performer 
and the villagers. Can you imagine the interaction, the fun? This is an example of Bayok by Dani Castiglione Siliada. The door of an abandoned old house. Yang puerta ng biniyaan na bay. You could read with me. Unan sayang mga panghitabo na kanaan ikitan sang pag-abre haw pagsira, pag-abot haw pagpanaw sang kaduom o kadadlaw, sang kalipayon o kamasulubon. Unan sayang hinungdan o misteryoso na mga rason sang kanaan makahadlok na kahungay. Ya agnas haw ya hugno hinay hinay sang mahayab na pag-inosara. Pagka mingaway sa tanawon yang malipayan na puerta sang awon doon sarado italignan in town. Sin o man yang mga gahuya ngan sin iya panaw silan wada kayod uli. You could watch the full video by clicking the link provided in the description below. Let's talk about the door of an abandoned old house, which is a trilingual poem written by Dani Castiglione Siliada. So the languages are Mandaya or Kamayo, Filipino and English. That's why it's called as trilingual. The English version was published in the Philippine Free Press magazine on March 26, 2011. And then the English version was translated into Italian and German languages for a short film and international exhibition. In 2011, the door of an abandoned old house was part of the Ghost People traveling exhibition and performances in Italy and Spain, curated and organized by Marika Fama. The Ghost People is a group composed of international poets, writers, painters, musicians, and performance artists advocating for the human rights of political victims of disaparecidos, disaparecidos or involuntary disappearances around the world. In 2012, the same poem made into a short poetry film became an entry to the Sixth Zebra Film Festival in Berlin, Germany. Sir Danny explained to me that this poem is biographical and historical by nature. This is dedicated to the victims of no man's land due to the intermittent war in Mindanao in the past. Can you imagine people hurriedly left their houses due to some occasional encounters between the military and the rebels. Some never come back. They never come back to their houses. And when he saw those abandoned houses, he felt very sad, troubled, and nostalgic. He compared this to his own abandoned, abandoned home. When his loved one died, one by one, mostly from tragic deaths, until the last of his family died in 2009 and he never visited his hometown again because of trauma. Enough for Bayok, let's talk about Dawot. Dawot is an intimate poetry performed spontaneously in epic form, either as ritual or as personal expression of feelings. It is a funeral. Panawag tawag or safe journey or prayer to the magbabaya or to 
the Mandaya god included in its ritual. It is about courtship, state of sorrow, or merriment included in personal expression in its ritual. This is an example of the Wot by Dani Castiglione Siliada. Uno uno takao sa pangaon. In English, how shall I love thee? You could read with me. Uno uno ko kapugan yang kagul anon sin ing kalag gikan sang wai kasigura duhan na paghigugma. Da uno uno ngini gamasulub on sang kahidlaw para matag iya hao mahangkop yang kanaan pinangga. Uno uno takaw panggaon kung yang paghigugma. Kinahanglan kasayudan ng kanmo kasing-kasing para bation yang kahayag ng pagpakisayon, yang pagkalipay haw pagkalumos sang ibawusan na. Uno-uno takaw panggaon kung wapakaw kasayod na ako kadikan mo yahigugma Oo, ihigug matakaw, pero ono-ono mo sa kasayudan sang kanak pag inosara. Kung mas gusto ko pa itago yang masip ganon ko nagugma. That's performed by Dani Castiglione Siliada himself. You could watch the full video in the link provided below. Enjoy the beauty of Mandaya by Dani Castiglione Siliada. You could see another example of ethnic Dawot from his YouTube channel titled Pagpano ng Kanak Pinanga and many more. Remember to subscribe his channel as well. And now let's proceed to Mandaya's Uyog Uyog. Uyog Uyog is a lullaby poetry about love and filial connection between parents and children or between the villagers and mother nature. From the word Uyog Uyog, it's like uh, cradling a baby. So this is all about Uyog Uyog or a lullaby poetry. This is an example of Uyog Uyog again by Dani Castiglione Siliada. Panghima tuog ng ina. Sang adlaw ina na langgam yadako. Sang uway na haula yasiko. Mga anak di ak magadugay. Yang kanta ng langgam na mamingaway. Adlaw doom ina na langgam gahuni, gaagas niyang mga luha sang pisngi, galawm yan na mga ipimpis magatagad, hangtod yang kamatay silan sang pugad. This is the English translation of Panghimatog ng Ina, Mother's Lullaby by Dani Castiglione Siliada. One day, a mother bird was caught and placed inside a rotten cage. My little ones, I won't be long. It cried with comforting song. Day and night, the mother bird continued singing to a distant nest as if telling the little ones to wait until they died in peaceful sleep. Those are the forms of poetry in Mindanao. And this time, let's proceed to the political regions of Mindanao. These are Sambuanga Peninsula, Origin 9, Northern Mindanao, Origin 10, Dava Region, Origin 11, Soksarjan, 
region 12, Karaga, region 13, and the arm or the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. The provinces of Zamboanga Peninsula or region 9 are Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga Sibugay, and Zamboanga del Sur. The cities under this region are Dapitan, Dipolog, Isabela, and Pagadian, and its capital is Pagadian. Now, Region 10 or Northern Mindanao is composed of five provinces of Bukidnon, Kamigan, Lanao del Norte, Misamis Occidental, and Misamis Oriental. It is comprised of nine cities, which are Cagayan de Oro, El Salvador, Guinguo, Malaybalay, Valencia, Oroquita, Uzamis, Tangub, and Iligan. Oroquita is its capital. Region 11 is also known as Davao Region or Southern Mindanao. These are the provinces, the five provinces of Region 11. Compostela Valley, Davao del Norte, Davao Oriental, Davao del Sur, and Davao Occidental. The region has six cities with Davao City as its capital. These are the cities of Davao, Digos, Mate, Panabo, Samal, and Tagum. Sok Sargen is designated as Region 12, which is an administrative region in the Philippines occupying southern central section of Mindanao. Sok Sargen stands for the provinces of South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, Sarangani, and General Santos. The regional center is the city of Coronadal, located in Cotabato. Caraga or Region 13 is divided into five provinces. These are Agusan del Norte, Agusan del Sur, Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, and Dinagat Islands. The four cities under Caraga are Butuan, Surigao, Bislig, and Tandag. Butuan is the capital. And lastly, the arm. Arm stands for the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. This covers the five provinces of Basilan, Lanao del Sur, Maguindanao, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. Its regional center or capital is the city of Cotabato. The following are the writers in Mindanao that every Mindanaoan should know. These are Tani Castellone Siliada, Talisfero Sunkit Jr., Raul G. Muldes, Don Pagusara, Francis Macan Santos, Lucy P. Rico, and last but not the least is Makariutsu. Let me just read a short biography of the following authors. Tilisparo Sunkit Jr. is a Higaonan poet and novelist. He is the author of Batbati Udan, a novel in Filipino. This is I Higaonan in English and is beautifully written and is available online. He won the National Commission for Culture and Arts or NCCA Writers Prize 2007 for a Cebuano novel, Mga Gapnod sa Kamadan, and the NCCA Writers Prize 2011 for a Cebuano novel, Ang Agalon sa Mga Balud. He is also a recipient of the National Book Development Board Trust Fund for Writers for a Cebuano novel, Mga Chamo sa Balag Batbat. His novel, Driftwood and Dryland, was published by University of Santo Tomas Publishing House in 2013. He writes in Higaonan, Cebuano, Filipino, and English. Next is Raul G. Moldes, who writes from Cagayan de Oro City. He has been a fellow to the Iligan National Writers' Workshops, the University of the Philippines National Writers' Workshop, and the Panagsugat Creative Writing Workshop. He has won awards for his fiction and poetry, including the Home Life Poetry Prize, Bathalad Mindanao Literary Awards, and Governor Gwen Garcia Literary Awards, among others. Next is Agustin Don Pagosara, who is an award-winning poet and playwright. He is a founding member of the Davao Writers Guild. He also founded the Ateneo de Davao Writers' Workshop with Makariu Chu. Next is Francis Macan Santos, 
who was born in Cotabato City, grew up in Zamboanga City, and was a resident of Baguio City from 1981 until his demise in July 2017. He earned his, his Master of Arts in Creative Writing from Silliman University in Domagate City and was a five-time Palanca Award winner in English Poetry. And last but not the least is Makario True. True has a doctorate in education, teaches literature at the Ateneo de Davao University. His famous works were Balian, Nanking Store, and Ang Bata Nadili Matulu. He was also acknowledged to have three Palanca Golds for Short Story in Cebuano and is a recipient of the National Book Award in 2005 for Davao Reconstructing History from Text and Memory. As a fictionist, his Ang Bata Nadili Matulo won first prize and Nanking Store won third prize in the so-called awarding of Palanca Golds. He is currently located in Kalatunan, Grande Davao City. You can explore their masterpieces by reading them. Let's help Mindanaoans preserve their culture by learning about their forms of literature, reading the works of their writers, and pass this knowledge to the next generation. Help me spread this by sharing this video so that this Mindanao heritage will not be forgotten. This has been Teacher L. Remember to click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.